Hello class, welcome back from your Easter break. Today we're going to talk about Nixon and Vietnam and also just uh, want to encourage you as you're preparing for the AP exam, if you're deciding to take that, uh, please just make sure that you're looking at the AP uh, rubric for DBQ scoring since the test will be solely a DBQ question. Uh, just make sure that you look over that. I would say at least once a week, you know, for 10 minutes or so, just familiarize yourself with what the scoring criteria are so that you're prepared for it uh, and so that, you know, you know exactly what you need to do to get all the points that you want to get when you're writing out that DBQ. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me anytime. All right, now let's get into Nixon uh, and the Vietnam War. And, you know, I'm just going to say every time, you know, I'm keeping this short because you're already, if you're taking the AP exam, you're already doing a 45-minute live stream that College Board has provided, so I don't want to overburden you. So I'm going to keep this nice and short, but I just want to cover some material. So when you're making connections on your DBQ uh, for the AP exam, that you have enough material to use for contextualization um, and that you're able to make connections um, outside of the time frame that you're likely to be tested on. All right, so Nixon. President Nixon, uh, he really inherits some problems as a president. So he's inaugurated in 1969, and the Vietnam War is you know, pretty much going full swing. And Lyndon Johnson had you know, urged Congress to pass the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which gave him authorization to basically do whatever he wanted to in Vietnam. Uh, we have a few hundred thousand troops in Vietnam. And, you know, by 66, we had over 300,000 troops in Vietnam. And so Nixon's inaugurated in 69. And the nation really isn't all that keen on the idea of the war. Um, and there are going to be some things that occur during the Nixon administration that sour the American public even further toward the war effort. Uh, first, a few things. Uh, Henry Kissinger uh, is appointed as the National Security Advisor. Um, so that's a, a big move. We're going to see why it's a big move when we look more at multipolarity. So not necessarily directly with the Vietnam War, somewhat with it, but not, not a, all with the Vietnam War. Um, the draft is super unpopular, and Nixon's really trying to quell America's angst. Uh, so he's going to push to change the draft from the draft to more of a lottery system where... You, you have a chance to not be chosen. Obviously, you have a chance to be chosen too, right? Uh, but the idea is that with the lottery system, not everyone's going to be drafted, not everyone's going to go over, but you have a chance to not be drafted. And he's hoping that's going to calm America's fears about the war and ease some discontent because there's a lot of pushback about the draft in the Vietnam War. A lot of people are dodging the draft. People are burning their draft cards. Uh, people are protesting the draft. You know, just generally, the draft isn't super popular. So the idea is maybe a lottery system uh, where you may or may not get drafted might actually help. Um, also, another thing that Nixon pushes for to help ease some of the anger and the anti-war protesting that's going on in America is the idea of Vietnamization. And the idea of Vietnamization, uh, it's what we did in the Iraq War as well. Uh, so if you're wanting to make even further connections down the road, where you have the indigenous force take over the war effort. So the idea of Vietnamization is let's train the Vietnamese troops, the South Vietnamese, those who are pro-Western, let's train them, let's equip them, and let them take over the war effort. We did that with Iraq as well, where we trained Iraqi troops and started leading operations uh, where there would be a small contingent of American troops and a large contingent of Iraqi troops, uh, and that would be how we tried to phase out and draw down the troops in, in Iraq. You have to have an exit strategy, uh, otherwise you're going to be there forever in some peacekeeping capacity, right? So the idea of Vietnamization is this is going to eventually allow U.S. troops to be able to leave Vietnam because the South Vietnamese are going to be able to entirely take over the war effort. Now, this is a good idea... But just as we've noticed with the Iraq War, especially when ISIS retook Ramadi and other cities in Iraq, um, it doesn't necessarily work out well without keeping 
some presence in the nation. There has to be some presence in the nation. Uh, but anyway, that's just a side point. Um, so if you're looking at patterns of continuity, that would be one. Uh, another thing that causes... So th these are two things. Draft to lottery. And then Vietnamization that Nixon's doing to try to ease some of the tension in America. But there are some things that cause more tension. One is the Kent State Massacre. So if you want to make a connection, Boston Massacre, Kent State Massacre, those would be uh, things that you can connect in history. So the Kent State Massacre, the National Guard is on campus at Kent State. There's an anti-war protest at Kent State, and it starts to heat up a little bit. Um, now, you'll see pictures of protesters like putting flowers in the end of the barrels of the National Guard's uh, M16s. Um, it, it wasn't all that, all right? Uh, kind of like with the Boston Massacre. It wasn't just entirely peaceful. You know, the people were in Boston were throwing things um, at the British soldiers. Similarly, there's some tension here on campus. And the National Guard opens up on the protesters at Kent State. And four people are killed. Nine are injured. Um, and America freaks out. Uh, because, again, just like with the Boston Massacre, you have the military killing citizens and what that says you know regardless of the circumstances surrounding it what that says to the public is we can't trust our government now i'm not saying that there weren't exigent circumstances i'm not saying there were but i'm saying that the message america receives when something like that happens is you can't trust your government so this causes even more anti-war sentiment because you have a branch of the military killing civilians um, also something that sours the public is the My Lai Massacre. So in 1971, now just in general, uh, there's more to this story. Uh, so it wasn't just like a bunch of American troops go in and they're like, hey, we're going to go kill a bunch of civilians. Once they got on the ground and realized there were civilians in My Lai, that's exactly what happened. But initially, the intel that the soldiers got was that everybody in this village is Viet Cong. And anyone left in this village is a target. They're working with the Viet Cong. You need to take care of business and eliminate them. However, when the soldiers got on the ground, um, it, it just went sideways really fast. I mean, it's very easy to tell, like, children, women, and the elderly are not combatants generally. And especially when they're unarmed, they're not combatants. There's, there are extreme cases. Like, there were cases of children that would... Um, bomb people in Vietnam. You know, there are always cases of, you know, the elderly or women that also engage in combatant style activities, but this was not the case at all in the My Lai Massacre. It was all non-combatants. All non-combatants. So the soldiers are on the ground, they see people, and they massacre over 300 unarmed Vietnamese civilians. And by the way, the only reason the My Lai Massacre stopped and there were some survivors from the massacre was because um, a helicopter pilot, a U.S. helicopter pilot, he came in and he threatened to fire on the American soldiers that were firing on the Vietnamese civilians. So it was actually a U.S. A serviceman that stopped the massacre. Um, but the My Lai Massacre, it was just, it was terrible. Um, it was a horrible thing that occurred. And it really even further soured the American public to the war effort because now what people see is, okay, yeah, you were killing combatants. That's one thing. Killing civilians, and there, are, there was a lot of rumors of this occurring already, and now here's definitive proof that civilians are being murdered by the U.S. military. And it just, America's done with the war, basically. Uh, so now Nixon kind of needs an exit strategy here. Uh, this is 71, by the way, the My Lai Massacre. In 72, we're still involved in the war. Nixon's trying to, to you know, slow things down. He's trying to get an exit strategy. So the Christmas bombing campaign occurs um, where the U.S. Uh, is, first of all, we tried to negotiate a ceasefire. That doesn't really work out. Um, and so Nixon's like, let's just bomb everything that we can bomb. We're just going to drop an insane amount of ordnance and we'll just bomb the, the fight out of the enemy. It doesn't necessarily work out. I mean, yes, we're going to reach a temporary ceasefire um, that 
is going to be negotiated because of the Christmas bombing campaign, but it's going to break down. Um, so the Christmas bombing campaign does allow us eventually to negotiate a ceasefire, but peace is going to break down. Um, the communists are going to start invading and trying to take over the entirety of Vietnam. And by March of 75, the, the armed rebellion starts again and Saigon falls uh, by April of 75. And that leaves the U.S. with $120 billion, not adjusted for inflation, by the way, $120 billion in war debt and 55,000 U.S. soldiers dead. And it, it's really just a, a very bad time in America. It's a tense time in America at home. You know, you have servicemen who feel like they're not appreciated. And uh, quite frankly, that some segments of society are hateful towards servicemen, right? Um, you have a segment of society that's anti-government. You have government that doesn't trust the civilians. It's just not a good time in America right now. Um, and we'll get into how there are other things that are going on in the world with the Cold War that could be not all that great, but could be good. We'll see. Uh, but the Cold War is still going on while we have this going on with Vietnam. All right. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, email me um, and make sure that you're checking that rubric, which I emailed out a while ago. You're checking that rubric you know, at least once a week just to make sure you are 100% solid on the criteria you'll be scored on. All right. Have a great day, everybody.